So uh, an introduction to the data repository and website. Uh, give a quick history of why the MAGIC database was created. Uh, in the 90s, uh, there had been a series of paleomagnetic databases created by various authors uh, and Iaga uh, was overseeing them. Uh, there was one for paleo-secular variation in the last five million years, uh, one on paleointensity, one on archaeomagnetism. Uh, these were all separate databases that were incompatible and uh, people uh, had a workshop and thought that putting them together into one location uh, for uh, easy search and downloading uh, would be a good idea. And also having one place where people could upload their data uh, for the paleomagnetic and rock magnetic community would be a good idea. So this is a project that's been ongoing for quite a long time. Uh, now we have a, a successful website and database um, that's working pretty well. One thing that we uh, also have been doing more recently is working on uh, the uh, FAIR principles, uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible. Uh, many journals and uh, grant agencies are looking for your data to be uh, put into a FAIR data repository when you publish, and uh, we meet these criteria. Uh, so MAGIC is a great place to, to uh, put your data. For others to use, and you can use it yourself. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about the website and uh, the search. Um, you can go to earthref.org/magic if you want to follow along. I'll give you a second for that. All right. So. Uh, here's the home page for MAGIC. Uh, at the top are uh, three boxes uh, for uh, major links to major functionality, uh, the search interface, uh, the upload interface, and uh, the private workspace. Uh, that's where uh, you can upload your data uh, before you make it public. Uh, you can allow uh, collaborators and uh, reviewers and editors of journals to see the data. Uh, in its final form before it's published. Um, and uh, you can uh, collect up uh, multiple contributions in there uh, as you're working on uh, papers and projects. And we have a list of various resources. We have a link to the data model. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit more uh, uh, shortly. Uh, a link to method codes. So these method codes are, are ways of describing your data in more detail. So say you have an age that's uh, in the sites table, uh, you can add uh, argon argon or uranium lead or carbon 14 to describe that. Uh, then we have a vocabulary list. So here uh, certain columns are restricted on uh, the values that you can put in there. So for example, age units, we have GA, MA, and so on. Uh, you have to put these in. So this is where you would see what those available options are. Um, we have a data management plan tool. So if you're uh, writing a grant, uh, many funding agencies now require you to say where you're going to put your data. Uh, this is a tool that helps you uh, write that and uh, set it up to put your data in MAGIC. Uh, we have a link to the PMAGPI software instructions, uh, how you can install PMAGPI and, and use it. Um, we have a link to uh, Lisa Tooks' PaleoMag textbook. Uh, it's uh, nice online and searchable. Uh, we have a Jupyter notebook link. So this is a page that describes our, uh, how to access the Jupyter Hub system and uh, also uh, links to notebooks um, that have been created mostly by Lisa Tokes 
uh, but others also um, using uh, PMAGPI and doing uh, analysis of paleomagnetic and rock magnetic information. Um, and then we have a link to our YouTube channel. So uh, on our YouTube channel, we have um, various playlists. One is a, a lecture series by the Magnet Z Group, um, Greg Patterson and Anita Dachara. Uh, run a, a lecture series. Um, so we have those uh, up here. We have tutorials <clears throat> from previous workshops. We have other tutorials and we have uh, scientific talks um, from previous magic workshops. And uh, finally, we have a help page. Uh, here we have a very, links to various videos um, showing you how to do uh, data imports, exports, and uh, other things that you might like to do. We have a, a, a fact that tells you how to cite your, uh, cite your data. So it's uh, important these days when you write a paper, uh, you can put in an actual citation of the data separate from the publication. Uh, and we, we produce uh, data DOIs you can see that in your private workspace. You can put that in the paper before it's published uh, during a review. Uh, and then uh, you'll have a, a reference to the data also that pe people can see uh, and an additional citation. Um, and from here, you can look at a description of the magic file format. Um, and we have some examples of uh, paleomagnetic directional data uh, and a paleo intensity example and uh, this sort of compact file format that we've uh, recently implemented that allows uh, the uploading of 2D data in a much more efficient manner. So that's some, some of the, the features of our website. Uh, we also have uh, news, article, uh, news items here over on the left. So a link to the Magnet Z uh, itinerary for the future and uh, a list of recent contributions that have been uploaded to Magic. Uh, all right, so next I'm gonna show you a little bit about search. So, Here's the search interface. Uh, we've got a, just an open text field search up at the top. So we search for something like Hawaii. Then we get 77 uh, contributions that match that, that field. Uh, we can clear it here. As you can see, we have uh, 4,228 contributions altogether uh, in the database. Another thing you might want to do is search uh, for a specific paper. So you can search by author and year. So um, search for one of my own in 2011. And check this. So that comes back with one uh, contribution. Uh, and uh, when you're on the contribution view, um, you've got a variety of summary information, uh, the title, a link to the paper uh, through the DOI. Uh, here is the publication DOI of the, the journal paper, the EarthRef data DOI. So this is what you can reference uh, in your papers for the data. This is a permanent URL to the uh, magic contribution, and then we have ages and so on. Um, to clear this, I'll show you uh, one more, sort of more investigative uh, search. So uh, say we want to look for papers that are um, in say the Northern hemisphere, <clears throat> zero to 90 degrees and around the, 
big impactor, the KT boundary between say 55 and 75 million years ago. And then you want uh, things that were dated or had low paleo intensity. So ones that have zero to 20 micro Tesla. So now we're down to 20 papers that, that meet this criteria. Um, to download the data from the search, um, you can go to download results. And now you have a, a variety of options. So you could download all of the contributions and all of the data from those contributions. Uh, and that will give you uh, the whole data sets from each of the contributions that met that criteria, just one row in that uh, contribution. Or you can just download the individual table uh, data points, which might be sort of, might be more useful in some cases. So you want just the sites that meet that criteria, you can click this, or just the rows that meet that, uh, the locations that meet that criteria. Um, and so I'm gonna download this in an Excel spreadsheet and we'll take a quick look at it. So, download rows. Okay, I gotta move this over to show up on the screen. Okay. Okay. So here's an Excel spreadsheet uh, of that data. Uh, you have information about uh, this download. Uh, then you have uh, all of the locations that met this criteria. So you've got a list of the citations, uh, all the pertinent information, and then you have all of the sites. So this is a way you can get all of the sites that meet a certain search criteria. Uh, and that's um, uh, our uh, first talk of the session. And I'm open to open this up to questions. I think with this small group, if you just want to unmute, if you have any questions. None so far. So none of these contributions have the data in them, including yours. What data? The measurement data. Uh, no, we don't have um, most 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 contributions don't have measurement data. That's correct. Our I will talk about this in the future. We're we're you know trying to have measurement data going forward, but legacy data is, is we would love to have it, but it's, it's a difficult task. Hi, uh, Nick. Yeah, well, Hi. yeah uh, following Lisa's question, so uh, we are actually very interested in getting the uh, raw pillow intensity measurements data. Uh, so, so I I saw that um, the small window that popped out, it said like a 63, like a, uh, specimen rows. Uh, can you can you try to uh, download it and then show us uh, what's in there? So, with which 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 search you want me to do a search and a download? Uh, just the the uh, the contribution that you uh, showed. It said like a specimen rows. I, I'm not sure it's like specimen data. Right, or... right. So if I do a, a download results. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can I can download with all of the all of these. Okay, but 
but not the uh, measurement rows. It's at zero. That means uh, there's no row measurements data uh, uh, yeah. on this. Do we... Yeah, let's see. Um, let's try one. So Wape, I just looked for yours and you haven't put any measurement data in either, so. <laughs> We, we are stuck uh, somewhere, <laughs> like a transforming from a, like a private data into public. So, so that, that's the question that uh, we are about to ask. So uh, just uh, uh, after this workshop and then in the dis discussion um, section, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how to, uh, like, like you guys can help us. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, next, the next talk will go into that some. Okay. So, so I think your question, Wape, was um, what's on the specimen row? It's the yeah. interpretations and the metadata at a specimen level. I see, I see. Oh, that, that one has a uh, measurement. This role. one has measurements. Okay. So Lisa has been very uh, disciplined in getting her measurement data in. And uh, they're not all there, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so this is a search of all of Lisa's contributions uh, or where she's an author since uh, 2015, I think. So. And no wonder I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Nick, j just to let you know, we actually have uh, uh, five people here. So, uh, okay, great. Of this. so, so, so this is a uh, a bigger group than you thought. So okay. <laughs> at least 17 participants. All right, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we're we're very excited to get measurement data into the database. And um, I guess I can start this talk. If there's no other okay. questions. I might as well just start the next talk and we'll get into that. Okay. All right.